I'm Bruce Bugby, professor of plant physiology here at Utah State University and president of Apogee Instruments. I'm pleased to be giving a talk for the GCI Summit today. Um, I'm going to talk primarily about our recent photobiology research here in our laboratory in the crop physiology laboratory. Many of you may know me, I, there's some of my videos have gotten a lot of hits. Um, one is one is 1.7 million hits. Um, they're all on the principles of photobiology, and some of them are on cannabis. There's a lot of different topics. But today, I'm going to talk about turning photons into cannabinoids, the science of optimal lighting. I like starting with this prism, from which I borrowed from the dark side of the moon, um, just showing the, the separation of white light into its component colors. And in fact, all the early photobiology research used prisms. We didn't have LEDs back then. It's just amazing what people did 80 years ago to uh, study photobiology. I want to acknowledge the funders. We get significant funding from NASA. The, NASA's goal is to develop food systems to feed people that will ultimately be living on Mars. Those people can't just use sunlight directly in a greenhouse. There's meteorite problems and there are also cosmic ray problems. The space farm is going to have to be very heavily protected from direct sunlight. That means solar photovoltaics and LEDs. And we recently showed that the efficiency of LEDs now has caught up and passed direct use of solar fiber optics. This is a huge breakthrough in the technology of LEDs. So NASA's work has switched now to focus on LEDs because of the findings in this lab. We are also funded by the USDA in a project called LAMP, Lighting Approaches to Maximize Profits. This is a much more applied program how do we help people effectively use lights in greenhouses and indoor farms? So, basic research, more applied research. Let's take a look at what we're doing. I like to start by separating quantity of light and quality of light. This is no big deal. I can tell you that the quality of light, generally from LEDs, is overrated for what it can do and the quantity of light is underrated. The importance of high quantity is underappreciated. And what we can do with quality, we can do a lot with quality, but, but uh, we can't do everything. And we just need the quantity. When we say this, quantity drives plant growth. This is biomass of the plants. This is size of the plants. It's a direct link between quantity of light, number of photons, plant size, quality drives development. Days to flower, shape of the plants. We can make tall skinny plants, short fat plants. Um, with quality of light, we can shape the plants. And with quantity of light, we do size. If we're doing cannabis, it's yield. It's the quantity of uh, yield that matters but it's also the concentration of cannabinoids in that. The concentration of cannabinoids, though, is largely driven by quantity of light again. And so even though we've done a number of studies on this, it's difficult to increase cannabinoids with the quality of light. Um, that's an important take-home message here. Um, the general wisdom is that if you get the quality just right, your cannabinoids will go way up, but it's more related to the quantity. So here we have dry mass, and, oop, and here we have plant shape. Now, let's focus on this part, the dry mass. This is the fundamental engine for driving photosynthesis. What's going on? I'm going to show you now the most important equation in the world. Now, when I say this, my physicist colleagues say, well, it's got to be E equals mc squared. Equations are always inputs on this side and outputs on the inside. 
other side, and we transform one thing to another. What do you think this equation is? Most important equation. This is it. Now, CO2 is a low energy gas, and water, we're going to turn them into carbohydrate. CH2O is a chemical symbol for all carbohydrates. This is food, and oxygen is rocket fuel. So we take two really low energy inputs and turn them into two really high energy outputs. And this equation, of course, is so famous, every kid from grade school on up learns it in multiple classes. This is photosynthesis, and it's just remarkable. Now, the first law of thermodynamics says energy in has to equal energy out. Well, this most certainly doesn't balance low energy inputs, high energy outputs, so we push it across, and how do we push it? Photons. The theoretical minimum is close to 10 photons to push this equation across to get one molecule of carbohydrate over here. This is, this is a more advanced biology book when we put a number here pushing this across. Now the energy in equals the energy out in this equation, but we show these big and we show this little and the proportions are all wrong. I want to show you how I'd like to rewrite this. Like this, CO2 and H2O, teeny, boom, going all the way up to carbohydrate and oxygen. This doesn't happen in one steps. This is multiple little steps, but now to balance this, kaboom, we put 10 photons in to push this thing uphill, and now the photons are, in, are drawn to scale here. This is how critical all these photons are to do photosynthesis. They come for free from the sun. We don't think about it. We use electric lights. We're counting every photon, and we want every photon to be used with perfect efficiency. When we calculate the theoretical efficiency of this, energy in and energy out, the energy in these 10 photons is about three times bigger than the energy in up here, and that means this equation is 30% efficient. Now, that's a theoretical maximum efficiency. We can get close to that. And you look at that and you say, well, that's not very good. Can't we improve on that if we get all the conditions just right? It's difficult because there's so many steps. This is a dashed line. If we think of this as about 23 little steps to get there, and each of these steps is 95% efficient, now we got 0.95 to the 23rd power, which is 0.3 which is 30% efficient. So if we think of photosynthesis like this, now we understand why it's a, just remarkable that this is 30% efficient. And again, these photons, when they came from the sun, we didn't worry about it. There was plenty of photons, and now we're pushing them uphill with electric lights. It really, really matters. This curve, this, let's go back to this. This ratio of photons in and, and efficiency of anything is always the output over the input. The output is carbohydrate, so CH2O, and the input's photons. This ratio has a very special name in plant biology, and it's called quantum yield, Q-U-A-N, quantum yield. And with our instruments here in our laboratory, we can precisely measure this ratio, output over input. This is in moles of carbon and moles of photons, so the units are the same. Let's look at what we find. These are measurements of multiple crops. Let's put this in blue. Um, here's our 10. Now, the, the, the quantum 
This is quantum yield, QY, and this is quantum requirement, which is one over quantum yield, and there's our 10 photons. Right at the top of the graph, this is light. And low light, inching up, we get close to 10, close to the, the maximum quantum yield, the theoretical maximum for all these crops. As we increase the light, this drops. The plants just can't stay so efficient when we push them harder and harder. Um, all of these crops are similar, with a couple of exceptions. Let's look at uh, lettuce, Grand Rapids. That's this line right here. Lettuce has very, very light green leaves, and it has a slightly lower quantum yield than darker green leaves like spinach, tomatoes. These are two different kinds of tomatoes. There's a um, high purple leaf lettuce. Marshall is a type of lettuce. These are very purple leaves. Purple is an anthocyanin pigment, and it's photoprotective. It's in leaves to protect them from intense sunlight, but in the process of protecting for, against sunlight, it also blocks some light. It's inactive for photosynthesis. So purple leaf marshall is not nearly as good. All leaves that have a purple or a red pigment in them have a lower quantum yield. So there's a price we pay for that beautiful red color in our plants. But look at here. When we get up to high light, Marshall is still cooking along. So it's almost as good in uh, very high light. Now, one line not on here. Let's put that in black. And if we put cannabis on here, it would it'd be excellent. I mean, I'm going to draw cannabis slightly higher and maybe even higher out here. This is cannabis. It's, cannabis is a very high light crop. It's life in the fast lane. You can pour on the photons and cannabis responds. All of these are high light crops. All of this is at very elevated CO2. Remember, ambient CO2, if we do nothing, is 400. But CO2 is an input for photosynthesis. So it's, for cannabis, it is always cost effective to enrich CO2 up to a much higher level. So all of our work here in this laboratory is at high CO2. If we don't enrich, we call it a CO2 stress study. There's the story on um, quantum yield and how much we can push it. These numbers allow us to model yield. If, you have, if we know the amount of light, we know the area, we know the time, we can predict the yield from systems from this kind of data. This, we, we often use 400, and that gives us 0.08. Lots of our models assume quantum yield of 0.08. Thank you.